Hey everybody, Psycho Service is here, and guess what? Halloween event is here. Oh boy. Oh, I hope you're looking forward to this. I definitely am to do some farming. I still haven't played those quests. But I need to definitely take a look at those. But first, we got a patch note regarding the Halloween event. And there's been something. So, change lock. Halloween event! Content preloaded into the game. Yes, yes, yes. As it went live, you can see it's already live. Quest updates. All classic legendary chest quest rewards are replaced with Celeste legendary chest, including classic legendary quest. So yeah, I was talking about this in the last video, or rather, not my last, but the one before the last. And yeah, <laughs> so we are get we got these legendary Celeste legendary instead of classic ones. But there's a note here. The, the only quest that will retain classic legendary chests is legendary recapturing Marion, but its number of chests is increased by 100%, both main and optional objectives. So, Marion is the only exception out of this. It's the only quest keeping those classic chests. The total amount of chests you can get from Marion right now is 12. It went from 6 to 12 chests. So, Marion. If you're looking for some easy quest to get some early gear, I would say Marion is one of those best quests to learn as your one of your first legendary quests. So now it's even more worth to play that quest. But yeah, all classic legendary chest. So that means all classic up outside of Marion being turned into the Celeste. So that includes City Conquest, that includes uh, Race, Lemon the Race, I think it's called, in Northern Hold, it includes Biorix Returns, Argus Legendary Quest, it includes the Mamu and People and the Old Fisherman Quest, everything. Okay, only Marion has the classic now, but everything else is Celeste. And updated the walls on several quests in Zabot to make them function like other quest maps. Walls. Okay, so if you do know about Zabot, I think if you have watched my videos, you could have seen that that the walls are really, were really annoying to deal with. Hey, did not check this, but I saw a comment on Discord that the walls are melting now. So. The walls are behaving just like any other walls, that they are properly connected and if you should hit the node, it should damage the surrounding wall segments properly. So that's how it works. But yeah, back to the Celeste chest, there has been added also the star ranking, which I think it's lower in the patch nodes. Champion mode, just to keep this fast and simple. Arrow ships are getting melee armor, melee infantry going to point 40, cavalry going to point 20. Fire ships are getting their pierce armor reduced and their bonus against ships reduced. That's pretty much true for everything. For Persians, Asabaras getting more health and damage, Sparabara champion being cheaper. Uh, da, 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 da. And Norse spearman champion also cheaper upgrade. And Global A Scouts do half their damage to fishing boats. Funny, yeah, for sure. Okay, UI updates. Empire Handbook renamed to Item Search in the Pause menu. So yeah, if you press the Escape, you will pause the game, you will see the Pause menu. Empire Handbook was still there. That should have been renamed right now. And it should lead you to like the Search Hub website, I believe. Added a new icon for Skirmish Hall, Elite Meet in Crete and Defense of Crete Chests. This icon will be used for future game modes as well. Yeah, if you take a look at those quests, they have their chest icons and the rewards being different than the normal chests. So you can tell, hey, this is game mode chest. They have it the same, if I remember. I took a look and I saw the Crete ones, I saw the Skirmish Hall ones, and they look the same to me, so... 
we have special chests telling you hey this is game mode chest. Ok other updates, star based legendary chest system implemented for the details can be found here. That's what we went through in the previous video. So no need to take a look at this. To simply put it, legendary quests have now their chest having star rating depending on the quest. So if you are playing 3 star legendary quest, you will get 3 star legendary chests as a reward from that quest. Only from the quest rewards, nowhere else. And this includes only legendary quests. So don't ex so if you're thinking about champion mode quests, those have still the old Celeste chests. If you're thinking about the elite quest, the city conquest now with the with the chest changed to Celeste and the other quest, it's all the classic legendary uh, not classic, but classic Celeste legendary chest. There was no change done to that. So only the star for the legendary quest. Okay, most blueprints can now be stacked. Stack sizes are, and here we can see it, workshops 10, warehouses 10, city vanity units 10, quest buildings 10, residences 20, Statues 20, vendors 20, flagpoles 50, vases 50, balusters 50, bush tubs, bush tubs yeah, 100, other capital city vanity 20, Lericon statue 5000. Now this, this one is really funny and you can see it below here. So some event material stack sizes increased to 250 from 100. That includes all the five materials from the summer event. Nice, now like I saved some space. Thanks to this change, so thank you. Lericon appear chance increased by 1000%. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this means like the chance should be 10 times higher now for Lericon to appear. And if you don't know what Lericon is, this is very very, very rare treasure chest that you can find only in repeatables and elite quests. No, you cannot find those in legendary chest, in legendary quests. It's a special treasure camp where you will see like some guy on, on a horse that looks like a unicorn I think. If you grab the chest you'll get a statue of Lericorn. And you might have seen that already if you have watched some of my previous video. Maybe I don't remember if I showed it, but I do have one of those. And I had it for a long time now. I don't even remember when it was that I got it. I remember that there was like one month where I saw it like three times and then never ever again, okay? And that was like three, maybe four years ago. So. <laughs> It's been a long time since I saw it and I definitely did play some repeatable quests and some elite quests at the time. And I haven't seen Lericorn for that long. And I bet a lot of other players have probably never even saw Lericorn in their life. So yeah, now it should be easier for him to appear. How often are you gonna see him? I can't tell. Okay, made further adjustments to legendary item drop rates across the board. Well, that's nice. I, I hope it's gonna be better now. But yeah, with the star system now included, it should be easier to get a lot of legendary items. Hopefully we'll get some of the items that we don't get that often. Okay, and that's all from these patch notes. So definitely what's worth noticing. Classic chest being turned into Celeste chest, except with Marion, that now offers double the amount of chest for its rewards. Zabol, Zabol walls working properly as any other wall. And the star base system. And also stacking the blueprints, that's also very nice. So I would say this, these are the most important changes. So remember, tell me what you think about these changes because I think these are pretty good changes overall.
Okay, and now we're moving on to the main thing. So that's the Halloween event 2022. So yeah, as usual, it's Halloween event, so you will have like five weeks. Is the timer here? I don't. There's no timer here. Oh no! Oh my! I guess we are missing something. Well, basically, it should be five weeks if I remember correctly. So a lot of time. What do you get? Exclusive quests. We have three legendary quests since the last year. We also got the two classic quests that were added last year. Then we also have two new legendary quests and two new minigame quests. And those are pretty. Those might be very interesting. I haven't tried them yet, but already sound interesting by the quest descriptions. Okay. Also exclusive vanity and decorations. Zach's prison, Mantis Lord Warehouses, Vanity, and now we also have the new event gear. And this is where it's going to become interesting because last time I, I couldn't see the numbers, the values would be unknown. Now we can see the values. And when I see when I saw them for the first time, I was like, yeah, they are obviously very powerful items. So let's go. Fire pot damage 67.8% and attack rate plus 20%. Especially effective on fire ships and Indian fire monkey. Well, those are the only units you, where you can put this. So what what would, would I think about this item? I personally think this is a very powerful item. And if we do the calculation properly so we go oh my god is this the wrong one and yeah, let's go 1.6 what's the number 7 8 times 1.2 so you can see over 100 percent dps output increase with this item so that's a very powerful item now what what do we need to compare this and this is probably the most used fire pot on your fire ships currently because there's no other unit and the best fire pot in the game currently at least in my opinion it is the best and that's the oil class called hot ship so now i'm gonna compare this to the average one so let's let's go minus one point and we got 754 times 1.195 okay and you can see this is the difference so about 8% diff damage output difference between the new fire pot of Marduk and the Hatshepsut so you can see from this that Hatshepsut still offers better value, even if it's an average one. It still offers better value than Marduk does against ships. Now remember, Hatshepsut is mainly against ships. This is damage output against everything. That's really important to mention. However, what do you use fire ships against? Most likely enemy ships. That's probably the big, biggest thing about fire ships. They are really great at destroying enemy ships. And that's the main unit they are hitting. So it makes sense to use the Hatshep suit. What else are, are they going to hit? There's a chance they might hit some buildings. Like most typically docks. Which you don't really need that much damage output if you ask me against buildings because fire ships do crash damage which already is really good against buildings and second thing most likely you also have access to the siege boat well maybe except of the norse and i think the indians will not have a siege boat as well so those things excluded but if you're playing as greeks or egyptians you have access to siege boats, which already do a pretty good job against enemy buildings. Now obviously you could also hit some units with the fire ships, but one thing that might be <laughs> very 
challenging for the fire ship to hit them because when I saw how they are trying to hit them, they can miss even if it's like by this tiny little bit, they can still miss since they don't do splash damage. So against normal units, that can be questionable. And I would say it's better to just use your arrow ships than your fire ships against normal units, okay? So what do I think? If you already have a pretty good hatchup suit on your fire ships, I'm gonna say don't replace it. You can definitely grab one Marduk per save that uses the fire ships or one for Indians. You can definitely do that. That's pretty okay. If you don't have hardship suit, then this is definitely an easy way to get very powerful fire pot. But if you already have hardship suit, you don't really have to go for this one. But if you want, I would say get one, try it a little bit and see for yourself how it works out for you. Since attack rate, I don't really want to say attack rate is working as well as damage because there are situations where I would say damage can be better than attack rate, but then also attack rate can be better. Uh, it's so hard to tell the exact situations, but I'm going to say you can definitely go with this one if you don't have hardship suit already. It's a very strong one. Okay, now Marduk's Siege Arm of the Unyielding, so the throwing arm. Damage 48.7%, attack rate 16%, and maximum range 8.4%. Now, obviously, this is the one that you have to consider, have to compare with the Rakotis one, which is the set Siege Arm. And if we take a look at this, so maximum range is literally the same value, so it's comparison to damage and damage plus attack rate. So this is clearly 60.4%. Now what about this one? Let me clear this. Okay. So what do we have? 1.487 times 1.16. And this is the damage, the DPS output you're getting out of this one. Oh boy, it's 12%. 12%. You see how huge this is? So this is definitely very powerful throwing arm as well. And I can definitely suggest getting one... And I got to say one for each SIF. I think it's somewhat safe to say that if you want to. Now, what are recommend recommending this on? So it's the Greek Ballista, Egyptian Catapult, Roman Onager. Which all, all three of these kind of make sense. But I'm also like, I don't really need it on these units. But it makes sense. Why? They, they do really good damage already. Attack rate can work really well with them. And it trades off a little bit of the damage. So if you have enough units already bursting the enemy units, with the attack rate, you can just switch them onto other groups, which makes perfect sense. So it definitely can be really good on these three units. I, I think you can go with this safely and be like, yeah, this is really great. Now obviously we have some other units as well. These are not the only ones. Remember, we have Siege Bolts, Ballista Trireme, Catapult Trireme, Mangonaut Galley. There you can put it as well. We have Eneris. You can put it there as well. If you're going for the more damage over range, then this definitely can be also a really great option for those units. You can put this on Palintanon for some reason if you want to go with higher damage. Now I, I'm not going to say it's necessarily better on Palintanon. But it can be an option. Okay. 
and then we have also throwers. I kind of want to try this on throwers to be honest because that sounds like I want to see the attack rate going with Demo's attack rate improvement for the throwers in H4. So I want to see how fast they're going to attack with that. That's what I'm definitely interested at the most. And yeah, yeah I just want to say it's very powerful. Okay. I definitely can say this can be better on some. I'm still a little bit like I would prefer the sets because but yeah, if you don't have sets throwing arm then definitely go for this one. Yeah I forget any other unit with throwing arm. I hope not. I think I mentioned most of them, if not all of them. I hope all of them yeah yes. It's just these Palintones, Throwers, Siege Bolt. Easy to remember. And then we also have the uh, coming back Zahak Heavy Spear, Marduk's Bow, and Zahak Amulet. So, Zahak's Heavy Spear, that's a pretty good spear, okay? That's a spear you can put on some of your units. You can put this on Lancers, you can put this on Cataphracts, many of the anti cavalry using Heavy Spear. Such as the Norse Horseman, Celtic Horseman, which I don't find that good on the Celtic Horseman to be honest. But it's definitely an option. It can be good on Prodromos, or rather, I would say okay. It can be good on your early game Spearman that you use for defense. It can work there. It's a pretty good spear. I suggest getting one for each Sith at least. One should be enough, you don't really need that many of those. One should be more than enough. Marduk's bow, I'm gonna say get at least one for your save or per save. Because it's a pretty good bow. It's a pretty good bow if you can get a, at least one available. Zach's amulet. Now this one I would say you don't really need this one that much. Unless you're going for caravans and for the one one legendary quest where there's the volcano that's gonna create a smoke that's gonna damage your units and they run by it and you don't really wanna build a wall to like make them go around yeah this can be your answer for that one quest but that's about it you can try putting it on like engineer if they're taking damage this can help keep them alive movement speed is also pretty okay but I would say you don't really need it that much. Definitely, I do not consider this being really good on villagers unless you're doing some weird villager rush, which in most legendary quests, that's not gonna work. So yeah, caravans can be okay. Engineers can be fine. I think that's pretty okay to put it on engineer, but that's about it. Okay, what, what else we are getting? Vanity, consumables, decorations, all available in the store. How do we access it? I'm gonna show it to you in a second. Where do you find the quests? You have the quest at Bahram. Those are the PvE quests. Then you also have the PvP quest. One is the mummy in the Haunted Isle. One is in Sparta. You get the, these quests where you can get additional rewards if you're playing PvP. Now obviously beware if you try to do something like this. Like beware, don't F, don't go AFK in Sparta games because nah, don't, don't just don't try to abuse it, okay? Don't try to. It's not nice and this is a small community so you're risking getting banned for this. It's not nice, okay? Don't try to abuse it. I'm warning you if if you try doing that and they'll find out you're getting banned. Okay, so definitely don't try this. And yeah, okay, so you can get everything. Quest the wanted board. Where you can trade your materials for the additional Halloween event points. How long will it last? So 
the event will end on the 20th of November. So next month, about a month. Yeah, seems about right. Was it? Is it five weeks or is it four? I don't know. I think it's four weeks actually. Hang on. This week that's gonna be 13 from one plus twenty. Yeah, yeah. It seems about four weeks. So better start farming. Okay, three projects are the it's everything free, very important. Don't create additional accounts. Motor counting is forbidden. It will it would give you a huge advantage in some cases, so don't even dare to do that, okay? It's not it's not nice, it's a small community. Please don't do that. And remember I'm using Sparta Quest. Yeah. So that's all about this. No. Let's get into the game then. Let's show it to you. So we're gonna go through here and tell you how to get access to the Halloween event. Now, I don't think if, if it's mentioned in the blog, obviously I'll leave the links in the description so you can check them out for yourself later. So you go to your home city, There's work to be done. you'll find it at the Empire Off Store. This mummy. That's the quest giver. It will give you a quest to now, go to the haunted to isle. You also have this pop up, but don't go to the haunted isle yet because you need this quest. Grab, accept it, and then go to the haunted isle. Not at Marcus Pollux, okay? It's back. not Marcus Pollux, it's the Empire There's Store, the mummy there. So you'll accept this. Now you will get this pop up for accepting Halloween event. This will tell you, hey, go here. But before we do that, let's check. Let's check the star system, and you can see that if we're playing two star quest, you get two star Celeste legendary chest. So that's pretty good Next new thing. Around. And if I look, and you can see this is the Celeste, the your typical Celeste legendary chest. Get off my so that's important, and if I remember correctly, even one star legendary chest will have better chance of dropping the legendary item than your typical Celeste legendary chest. So playing legendary quests should be much more rewarding than, let's say, elite quests in this scenario. Okay, anything else? I think that's all. I'm not really going to show you if you want to check out the icon. For the chest in the skirmish and feed, you check it out for yourself, it's not that hard. Okay, this pop up you can click here. Let's go to the haunted isle. And what I didn't show you, remember the quests in the Zahak prison also offer the Halloween event rewards. Okay, so you go here, Bahram, Goodbye. complete the quest. And now we have the quest. Okay, I think I know why I don't have the mummy here. <laughs> I know why. But yeah, the, this mummy should give you the quest for the Sparta PvP. I don't have it here in this case. That's okay. But yeah, Bahram is the one that's giving you the... Excuse me. All of the quests. So we have the minigame quests, we have the really old ones. And then we have the two new ones. We have the three legendary quests from last year, then two new ones, and then the global quest. So co-op, completing the quest, that's what I'm going to take right away, and then quests for crafting the items. And for now, the Marduk's bow is being bugged. It doesn't work, but it should be fixed tomorrow in the tomorrow's patch. So, yeah, if you uh, think about Crafting the Marcus Bow right now, don't do it right now. But yeah, legendary quests, those are very well rewarding. Okay, now remember if you want these new items, it's 30 of those emeralds, 30 souls, 3000, 3000, which if you look at the rewards of the legendary quests, it's 5, 5, 500, 500. So 
if you play like six of these Vile Isles or six legendary quests in general, you get one item. That's how it works. Very easy. Goodbye. So that's gonna be it. Then we got yeah these quests. We have some the global ones. I feel like yeah we just have the trading four quests. We have the soul guardians, emerald guardians, and the mummies. Now a little warning: these are not the units that you will find in quests but you need to find these units guarding treasure camps okay there are special treasure camps unlike in summer event where you have these treasure camps with elephants here you have actually three or actually i think four types of the treasure camps mummies have like two which is like this dark rock and this that tree that looks like this it's just larger and then you have like the haunted mansions and graveyard I think for these two which are very rare okay those are very rare so if you don't complete these by any chance it doesn't matter it's just 100 Halloween points per one of those you don't really have to look at these, if we look at the rewards, yeah, it's pretty much the same as in the summer event, so per one uh, common material you get one point and per one of those advanced materials you get four points, but you need full stacks for these, so that's pretty much the same. Now let's check the store. That's where you find most of the items. As we can take a look at this, we can see that the Zax heavy spears and the amulets cost both 25,000 Elvin event points. This seems a little bit high, and you might expect if you've watched me complaining about the prices for the summer event quests being too high. In this case, I have to say this seems adequate because if you take a look at the Halloween event rewards especially the legendary ones so let's say paint the town dead I'll click here you can get 550 this is free stars so nothing new that's the same as in summer event but if you scroll down and look at the secondary objectives you can notice you're getting also additional points for the secondary objectives 100 per objective and remember you also have the archived quest so there you can find some really good quests that can offer you a lot of points and th there's one that can give you like 850 points and it can be done in like 20-25 minutes so that's a lot of points there if you know about someone who's got the archive which you do you can just visit his home city and go play the quest from there so yeah if if I had to say these prices seem adequate to me, I think for every single Zax item that I, as I can remember, I think it was always 25,000 points or maybe less a little bit, but I know it was never that much, that much more. So this is pretty good price. If you want those items, definitely worth getting. You can earn a lot of points during Halloween event, which is a nice thing about the Halloween event. Obviously, if you don't have anything else to spend your points on, you can use the Halloween chest here. Remember, the large ones are just like the legendary chest, have better chance of dropping the legendary items, and I don't think there's anything worse than a rare item there. Then we have the vanity items, you can buy those if you want to. Zax prison if you want it, it's a nice decoration. You need the event materials to build it. But it's not as necessary to go for right now since you can visit other player that already owns the prison. Instead if you want it and you get it, you can save few clicks thanks to it. Instead of just typing like visit this player. Then go 
click on this city, visit, and then go to find the prison. So this can save you a little bit of time if you if you wanna get if you get to prison. Obviously we got the decorations, the storehouse, the floating one, and I think the haunted warehouse there is as well. We can go with the ruined buildings, graveyard, and consumables if you want to. Okay, I think that's all I have to say. So yeah, good luck, enjoy the Halloween event. And I can I am definitely looking forward to the new quest. You can definitely look forward to some videos of, about those. And yeah. Get as much as you can. So enjoy the Halloween event. And if you like this video, make sure to like this. Press that like button as hard as you can. Press that subscribe button if you haven't already. As hard as you can. Just straight smash it if you can. Leave the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye.